Chair, Conference, thank you very much uh, for that welcome. It's fantastic to be uh, back here in Brighton. This was the place of my first conference back in 2000 when I heard the speeches of Dewar, Blair, Brown and Mandela. Conference, I should begin by saying that I've never actually spoken at national conference before, so let me start by doing this properly. Ian Murray, first time speaker, last man standing, the Independent Socialist Republic of Edinburgh South CLP. And I want to begin conference, if I can, by paying tribute to a very good friend, a comrade for many years, elected to lead our party with the biggest mandate in post-war Labour history. Conference, I want you to join me in congratulating our new Scottish Labour leader, Kezia Dugdale. And conference, Kez may only have been elected a few weeks ago, but I know that she is ready to lead our party and I know she is ready to take on the SNP in May. And Kez, every single one of us is right behind you. And friends, let us also pay tribute to Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy, you ran a campaign that energised and enthused people right across the country and especially in Scotland. And I will stand with you through your leadership of this party. <laughs> friends, if I'm being frank, I don't really want to be standing uh, here today. In fact, I'd rather be watching the rugby. And good luck to Scotland. I'm not quite sure what the score is yet, but uh, uh, I'm sh I don't know if they're doing well. There's a few boos there, so perhaps they're not. <laughs> but I'd rather be sitting where you are, listening to Margaret Curran's first speech as the Secretary of State for Scotland, 143 days into a new Labour government. Surrounded by the colleagues from constituencies across Scotland who I worked with over the past five years, but instead we lost Margaret and all my other Scottish colleagues at the election. Colleagues, every one of those MPs who lost their seats in May worked hard and made an enormous impact, not just on this party in Scotland, but on their communities. And from this conference, let us show our appreciation for their years of dedicated service. Thank you. But conference, every cloud has a silver lining, and I'm going to let you into a little secret this afternoon. Margaret Curran told me just before the election that if she lost, she was going to head to Spain and open a bar called Margaritas. <laughs> so from this conference hall today, let's send her gratitude for everything she has achieved in her long career and a loud and clear message to her. Thank you, Margaret, and we'll have a pina colada next time we see you in Spain. Friends, I want to talk to you today about how we renew our historic ambition for Scotland and how we can match that ambition with the courage needed to meet the challenges that we face. No one who knows and loves our party or shares our values is feeling anything but despondency at the fact that we aren't in government. And no one who sees the impact that the Tories are having can feel anything but anger that they have another five years in power. There are no longer just warnings in Labour Party press releases. This is the reality in all our communities. In Mark My Words conference, the Tories won't stop until they've dismantled everything Labour fought to build. Tax credits cut, sanctions driven by targets, young people out of work, working people worse off, services cut to the bone, constitutional vandalism that threatens the UK, employment rights eroded, trade unions neuters, charities gagged, prioritising the few at the expense of the many. Well, let us say today, David Cameron, the Labour movement will not lie down. We will not give up. We will not crumble in the face of this unprecedented assault. Let this Tory government serve as a reminder that every day out of office, every day without the power to change people's lives, every day on the opposition benches is a day wasted. Because as Keir Hardy knew over 100 years ago, and we commemorate his death this weekend, the purpose of this party is to govern. If we are not in government, we can't change the lives of the people we stand for, the millions of people across the country that need a Labour government. 
conference, the election result in May means that the Scottish Labour Party is now being led by a new generation. For Kez and me, devolution has been the norm. It's not new to us. I campaigned for the Scottish Parliament when I was a teenager, and all my adult life it has been at the centre of Scottish politics. Everyone remembers the promise of that period, the excitement, the potential, the feeling that we were on the verge of something new and significant in Scotland. Donald Dewar, Scotland's first First Minister, proudly said, there shall be a Scottish Parliament, and then told us what he would do with the powers. And in the years that followed, the Labour Party used the powers of the Parliament to make a fundamental difference to the lives of the Scottish people. Leading the way on the smoking ban, investing to transform our schools and hospitals, introducing free personal care and travel for the elderly, and putting in place world-leading legislation on homelessness. We never avoided responsibility by concentrating on what the Scottish Parliament couldn't do or blaming others for our mistakes. We never let the Constitution get in the way of our ambitions for Scotland. We governed with optimism, ambition and a sense of hope. And it is that ambition for Scotland's future, so much a part of the early days of devolution, that we need to renew today. The SNP government have been in power longer now than Clement Attlee's Labour government of 1945. But unlike that government, their ambition has not been matched by progressive action. That's what I hear everywhere that I go in Scotland. In Aberdeen, the leaders of our oil industry complain that a skills shortage means they recruit fewer people from Scotland. A research scientist in Edinburgh working in facilities that should be world leading raised constant concerns about the lack of support. And in Glasgow, Scotland's largest city, it took a half a billion pound commitment from the UK government to force the Scottish government's hand to create a life-changing city deal. Mario Como said, you campaign in poetry and you govern in prose. Will the SNP campaign with optimism but govern with pessimism? They claim to campaign like lions, but they govern like mice. Sleek it, cowering, timorous beasties in government. Conference, this goes to the heart of what is wrong with our politics today. Too much rhetoric, not enough action. It's easy to talk big, but to act takes conviction and determination. The SNP have more power in their hands than ever before. During the referendum, we promised significant new powers in an agreement brokered by one of our greatest leaders, Gordon Brown. And conference. Let no nationalists rewrite the history of what Gordon Brown and the Labour government achieved for this country, because the Smith Agreement that followed was a historic achievement. At the election, we said Labour would deliver a Home Rule Bill for Scotland. The result meant, of course, we're not able to deliver that. But we do have a Scotland Bill. It's not perfect. We all know that. But it's a platform from which to build. And together with my colleague in the Scotland office, Wayne David MP, who gets my heartfelt thanks for being a fantastic support on the bill, I've been pushing the government to do so much more. We need the Tories to stay true to the spirit and letter of that Smith Agreement, to ensure that we have the power in Scotland to create the welfare system we want with no threat of interference from Ian Duncan Smith. So if the Prime Minister and the Scottish Secretary are serious about powers for Scotland, then I say this to them today. Accept Labour's changes. Don't break your promises. And don't deny the will of the people across Scotland. This bill should herald a new era for the Scottish Parliament, the continuation of our journey towards a fairer Scotland. I want us to reclaim that spirit of the early days of devolution when we talked about what we could do rather than what we couldn't. The powers are extensive. It's a massive opportunity for Scotland, for the young person struggling to get a job, for the disabled depressed by the Tories' cuts to welfare, for the commuter who wonders every day why Scotland's railways are owned by the Dutch government and not our own. Despite the constitutional wrangling, <laughs> despite the constitutional wrangling around this bill, this is what the bill is actually about. The power to create jobs for our young people to create the welfare system fit for Scotland, to take full responsibility for tax, to build a people's railway owned in Scotland for Scotland.
conference, if Carlsberg made devolved parliament, this would probably be the most powerful devolved parliament in the world. And if the SNP turn their backs on those powers, they'll be turning their backs on Scotland. And it will confirm what many already suspect, that they never wanted this bill. In fact, the SNP have already written their press release. They must have wrote it months ago. The story doesn't change, and I have it here in my hand. And guess what it says? It says the powers don't go far enough. It says we've been betrayed. It says we might need another referendum. Conference, I will not let that happen. And I have this pledge for the people of Scotland today. I won't put politics before Scotland's best interests. I will fight for the powers we were promised, and I will fight for more. And then I will fight to make sure they are used. Conference, I will fight and fight and fight again to ensure that Scotland gets the powerhouse parliament it deserves. <laughs> Conference, let me conclude by saying that the stakes are high for the future of our country. There are two directions we can go in towards a stronger Scotland where we use the powers of our parliament and where our actions match our ambitions, or towards another round of the same old arguments. Friends, the SNP want to divide us by geography. The Tories want to divide us by wealth and class. But we all know that our future lies in the strength of our unity. United, we will renew our party. United, we will renew our party. United, we will renew our ambitions for our country. And united, we will change Scotland. Thank you.